January is a pretty quiet month in the garden. I think for most of us, it's cold, it can be miserable, and there isn't much growing. One thing that I do do is keep on top of feeding the birds. I have a couple of bird feeders out here in this tree. This one that I'm filling right now, and I make fat cakes for the birds as well. And I'm gonna show you how I do it towards the end of this video. But the reason that I feed the birds here, also in my office window where I love watching them come up to the window and feed. The reason I put out feed is that there's a lot less food and cover for birds these days as people have come out into the countryside and built housing developments and taken down hedgerows there's just a lot less food for garden birds and so i think it's really important to put some feed out for them and it's great for the ecosystem in general now i didn't get video footage of it i wish that i could have but two weeks ago I was out here in the front. I had just pulled up in the car and I noticed something rustling around in the bushes and I thought it was Maggie. It would typically be Maggie, but out came a sparrow hawk and it had a blackbird. Now it was really sad to see the blackbird being taken away as food, but that really shows that by feeding them, I'm helping the ecosystem here. So it's just part of this overall strategy that I have for making this space, this land, productive for us, but also a haven for wildlife. January can be incredibly quiet in the garden. You can be inside, reading books, planning for the year ahead, or it can be incredibly busy. Usually my Januarys are pretty slow, pretty quiet, but this year is a little bit different. I'm giving up the allotment garden at the end of this month. So that means I've got two weeks left to move any of the plants home that I want, my tools, support, anything else and to tidy it up a bit as well so that the next tenant has a good place to start. January is actually a really good time to be doing this because plants are dormant which means that I can move them a lot easier and get them established here in the home garden. There isn't a whole lot going on as far as planting and, and whatnot so January is the time to be doing this and I even have a tree that I need to transplant here in the home garden because it's just not quite in the right place and this is a good time to do it. So let me show you the state of the allotment garden and then let's get planting the first of those allotment plants. Today's the day. It's the day that I'm gonna start packing up what I can from the allotment garden. And I've not spent any time up here, well, very little time since last July, I think, very early July, just zero, zero time with the new garden. There are a lot of plants here, including raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, gooseberries, blackberries, red currants, loads and loads of plants that I'm considering taking home, but I don't want to risk the chance of bringing the New Zealand flatworm home and into where the veg patch is. And so I'm going to dig up some of these plants, clean off the roots as best as I can and see if it's going to be worth taking some of these plants with. They represent years of me planting out here, a lot of money, a lot of time. So it would be nice to be able to take some plants with, but if it comes down to it and it's not easy, then I'll just end up leaving them here. The first thing that I've done is dig up all of the strawberry plants from this little patch here. And I have them here in this trug. And I've cleaned off the soil as much as I can, trim the leaves, 
Some of them are starting to regrow already, even though it's January. And next I'm going to soak these in some water just to try to get any more of the soil off. But they're looking relatively clean. I'm pretty happy with these. And these are really strong strawberry plants. They're going to be producing a lot of fruit this year. Far more than the new bare root plants that I've, I bought and potted up just recently. So let's get these soaking and then I'm going to take them home and get them planted up into that far bed along the side of the veg patch. I've just spent a good 10-15 minutes clearing this entire area of any weeds. So clumps of grass, sticks that have been mixed in here with this compost and anything that was green basically and I've taken that away to break down into more compost. Now it's time to plant these strawberries. There's a mix of varieties in here. I'm not quite sure which is which. Doesn't matter, they'll all be delicious. And all I'm gonna do first is lay these out here in this area about 12 inches apart. And because this is a bed environment and it's not really rows like a traditional garden, I'm not going to put rows in between. They're just all going to be spaced out equidistance, 12 inches apart in a grid. In the end, I managed to salvage 34 strawberry plants from the allotment. And when you consider how much one of these costs potted up or even bare roots, I've saved a lot of money in bringing these home from the allotment. And not only that, but new strawberry plants like the bare root ones that I've just potted up that are in the cold frame right now, they won't produce as much this year. These plants will, they're two and three years old. And so the bulk of the strawberries this year are gonna come from these. And in fact, I, I can even see some strawberry flowers on these plants. I don't think that they know that it's January. As far as planting these, it's really just simple. Just make a hole, put them in, making sure that all the roots will be buried and just pull the, the soil or the compost back over them and they'll grow just fine. Here in Britain, it's a pretty mild climate, which is why there are green leaves on these strawberry plants and the flowers and all of that. And they've actually got some new green leaves coming up right now. But in other places that get really cold winters, you might want to mulch your strawberry plants with straw. I won't be doing that over the winter, there's no need here, but it does protect the crowns from getting bitten by frost and snow and helps them to survive truly cold winters. I will be mulching these with a bit of garden compost, probably before spring. And this is a relatively new no-dig bed, just created this year. It's literally just compost in here right now, but it does need topping up each year. It helps with keeping the organic matter topped up, but also protecting that top layer from losing moisture and rejuvenating it with nutrients. Maggie's finally woken up from her nap. She seems to wake up between four and five these days, come out for a little bit before coming back in to chill. She's turning into quite the little adult tabby cat. I can't believe that she's almost three years old. She'll be three years old in May. And when we got her, she was about three weeks old, just this tiny, tiny little thing. But she still acts like a kitten. Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. Maggie, over here, Dum Dum. Here she comes. She's just followed me from the garden. And now she's back with her Meowma. I wanted to come into the greenhouse, which is still very much a storage area, to show you my broad beans. And they're more than ready to go out in the garden. I've sewn them into these modules to keep the seeds safe from mice because mice tend to take them is what I hear. And 
What happened last year is very similar to what's happening this year is that the plants are getting a little bit too tall. Some of them are a little bit leggy like this one. But what I did last year was I just planted them out and then I pruned them down. Now these broad beans, they have been raised in a slightly pampered place, the greenhouse, and they may get a little bit bashed. Uh, I'm gonna put some protection up for them, but I think that they'll be just fine because the ones from last year got battered. I trimmed them down and they bounced right back. And actually trimming them back, so cutting off the growing tips, made them a bit more bushy and I think more productive. I am going to be putting in these stakes though because they do have a tendency to flop all over the place and so I'm hoping that this will keep them growing straight and I'll keep them I guess trained to each one of these little bamboo canes or sticks as they continue growing in the spring and early summer. Right, I've got quite a few of these to plant. All I'm doing is spacing them about nine inches apart, getting them in the ground and then tying them into these stakes. At least in my climate, you can plant a lot of different types of bare root plants in January. And all that means is that they are plants that can survive without soil around their roots and they're a lot cheaper than potted plants and are often sent through the post. And you can get bare root strawberry plants. I have some bare root raspberry plants. You can also get bare root hedging. Now last winter I planted two rows of bare root hedging. One row along the back side of the house and another row along the side of our property. And those are an assortment of different types of hedges that produce nuts and berries and edible flowers. And they'll be cover for wildlife as well. Now last year, all we did was make little holes in the ground, pop those sticks in with a little bit of roots around the, the bottom of the stick. That's what they look like. And then as you saw this year, they blossomed into young green saplings. Some of them grew as, as tall as six feet tall. A couple of the elders did. And this year they'll grow even more. But the thing with planting bare root plants now is that they're cheaper. They'll establish just as quickly as potted plants. And it's something that you can do now in January when there aren't so many different types of gardening tasks on the to-do list. If you get a lot of plants in April, say, there's a lot more things that you need to be doing at that time as well. Sowing seeds, weeding, all kinds of things. So this is a really good job for January. Saying that, I have a potted apple tree here and I'm gonna plant it today. And it's potted because I couldn't find a bare root version of Discovery apple tree that would be able to be shipped here to me on the Isle of Man. And so I bought a potted one with a gift voucher that Josh gave me for Christmas and I'm going to pot it up down here. Now Discovery apple trees, they have a beautiful apple. It has a slight pinkish tinge on the inside. It's an early apple. It's not a keeper, but it's a delicious eater. And I don't know how many apple trees are in the garden right now, but there are a lot. We do eat a lot of apples and I'm especially happy to have this discovery apple tree. So let's get this planted. This is a really good place, I think, for this tree. It's in line with the next one up. It's away from the area that I'm going to be using for the wildlife pond, which is just here. I get manure and compost deliveries back over here, but it's out of the way and it's a good distance away from the other trees. So let's get this planted. All I'm going to do is dig a hole, plant it up to the exact same surface level that it is in the pot, and that's it. there are plants growing out in the garden, almost everything is dormant. Unless it's inside where it's warm, 
like the cuttings, the perennial kale that I've brought in here, unless it's warm and there's light, then plants just go into a state of dormancy. So my main job for January is moving plants, dormant plants home from the allotments. And I've got the strawberries now, I've got uh, comfrey. I'm planning on bringing home the red raspberries, a cardoon, if I can lift it out of the ground. I did try the other day and it was just very difficult, but there are lots of other plants too, the thornless blackberries and some other perennials that I'd like to bring home as well. The lavender that I brought home, I have it potted up in containers. I just wanna see how it does, if it survives the trip as a bare root plant, the thyme as well. So time will tell with those. And if they do survive and there's no sign of flatworm around the pots, then I will plant them out into the garden. I also need to go through my seeds and make a plan for what I'm planning on sowing and growing this year. I think that I have all of the seeds that I need now. I've also ordered some asparagus crowns. And so I'm gonna show you planting those out in April. I've not had asparagus in a long time, so it's going to be fantastic having them here in the home garden. And they are an investment in time. They do take years to establish, but once they are, then you'll have that delicacy ready to go each spring for a fresh harvest. So there's, there's a lot to do this month. And I'm also keeping on top of feeding the birds. At the beginning of the video, I shared how I was using just dry bird seed to feed the birds, but I also make fat cakes for the birds as well. So let me show you how I do that. It's really easy to make fat cakes for birds. And all I do is I take a block of beef drippings, AKA tallow, and I melt it in a pan. And then when it's fully melted, I'll add one to two parts bird seed and nuts, sometimes dried fruit like raisins, and then mix it together, pour it into a silicon mold, let it cool, and then I'll refrigerate it. And then once it's fully hardened, I can put it out into the cage that I have hanging on the tree. And the, the fats, the animal fats, really do add a lot of calories, help birds to survive the winter. You don't wanna use non-animal fats like coconut oil because it can get into birds feathers from what I can understand and it affects the waterproofing so it's not good for bird survival to use vegetable fats so stick with lard and tallow when you're making these. I can't believe it but it is so mild outside right now that I am out here without a jacket. We have this wonderful thing called the Gulf Stream that comes from Florida, goes right across the Atlantic, and then flows right around the British Isles. And it keeps us nice and snug and mild through the winter months. We're at the same latitude as the middle of Canada. So without that, I would definitely not be outside without a jacket. And there might be snow and ice and other wintry weather out here in the garden. Now, even though it is quite mild here, I'm not sowing any seeds just yet. At the end of the month, I'll start off my aubergines, the eggplant, and they'll be in heated propagators. And then once the leaves are out, there'll be grow lights above them as well. Most of my seed starting starts towards the middle of February and then carries on into March and April, with I would say the high period being the end of March. If you are interested in knowing what seeds you can start now in your gardening zone and being able to judge the best time to sow those seeds, I have a piece over on my website, lovelygreens.com. Go to the homepage there and it will give you really good advice as to know when you can start sowing your seeds. But for most people, hold off just yet. There'll be plenty of time to sow seeds in the coming months. January is really a quiet time. Spend the time now to organize your seed stash and to plan what you're gonna be sowing and growing this year. Now, I'm gonna be back in a couple of weeks and for the time being, I'm going to be doing a video just every two weeks rather than every week. I'm catching up with a course that I'm producing and also I've been doing some massive work on my website. So if you go over to see the seed sowing 
article, then you'll be able to see more of the content that I, ha that I have over there. And then as time goes on, I'm going to try to go back to once a week. But for now, it's going to be every two weeks. And the next video, I will show you what happens further on in the garden, including bringing home the raspberries and starting a no dig raspberry patch. Thanks so much for coming along this time and I will see you then. Bye for now.